solo, I think whatever the instrument comes from making one sound and being totally inside of it and in total acceptance of that sound. If we can't make just one sound and love our sound, how are we going to string together a couple of sounds together or a phrase? Um, I do know how to solo in a bunch of different styles, but it's always one sound at a time. So before learning how to play over changes or anything about scales or harmony, I think the first thing is just really to pick up your instrument and be really quiet inside and get into a receptive state and just play the first sound that comes to your mind. And step two is... Actively listen to that sound into silence. So this is what uh, one of my master teachers taught me. Play, to make any sound, just automatically without any thought. And then listen deeply, and then in the next silence, intuitively choose another note. So I'll do this for just 10 seconds. And the process is, you know, you're saying yes to what's now. So the silence, the space is very important, but then eventually that silence becomes so infused in your state of consciousness that one can just continue to operate from that space. You might find that you stumble upon something, whoa, I just made up a little riff, cool. So that's the first step, I would say, is to just be so inside of a sound that there's no room in your mind for any angry captions, any judgmental captions. Be totally immersed in the sound till there's nothing else but you and the sound. The deep listening is really liberating. In all my workshops we go into this place. It's not a serious place, it's actually very light-hearted. Once we start to design that place, it's easy to operate from it and designing that place is a tangible feeling in yourself. Now apply that to something that's in form. Often a good place to start with in form is to string together single tones into a scale. So a nice place to begin, especially on the uke when you have a nice droning string, whether it's a high or a low, is to begin to use, I don't know, the G minor pentatonic. And that's so what I would do is now begin to be very present with those sounds as I learn a scale. I'm not just thinking about first fret, third fret, B flat, C, D. I'm not thinking so much about notes, I'm just being with tone. So I'll greatly, uh, you know, uh, compress this. This would be where we go through and learn this. And of course, there's other places to play it in here too, but then begin to drone for yourself. And there's our structure. We're going to play over a drone, soloing over a drone. Soloing is just making, now with this form, some phrases, some statements. So my first phrase was a rhythm. Boom, bum. I repeated it. Boom, bum. And I answered it. Boom, bum, bum. Bum, bum. So that question and answer game is, is a great place to start. But staying in that space of... I'm listening, I'm playing very little and very receptive, and your mantra is yes, yes, yes. That's a beautiful sound I just made. So what we've been talking about are really some of the fundamental building blocks of improvisation. But now taking a solo is sometimes thought of as a different game in a way it is. To solo over a series of chord changes and to have your melodic and rhythmic and harmonic choices fit into the style that you're soloing on top of is a whole different game. Um, we can not explore that in this short amount of time. But I will say this, there is a place that you can operate from where one sound at a time works, whether you're playing on top of a bossa nova-like background, blues-like background, or whether you're playing um, just with a, you know, a drum track or a drone box, it all will work the same way. So the, I think the idea is you know, when you begin to make 
phrases, if you, t if you apply this to, say, a G minor blues, we were just playing you know, uh, the G minor pentatonic scale, now that you're making some phrases with it. So phrases are rhythm. So I played it once and answered. Making your improvisation into a daily practice has a lot to do with realizing that you're already improvising. You improvise the outfit you're wearing, you improvise the order in which you ate your breakfast. You are always improvising your life. And bringing a little bit of improvisation into your practice, it's not just about learning how to solo, it's just being present with the moment. And now this can make your all your technical exercises and any song that you're learning into a very um, almost meditative uh, exercise. So, so to improvise with it, the first thing I would say is just to go slowly. Begin your daily practice with one note at a time. You'll be able to pay attention at the slow speed, whether your hand is in position, if it feels relaxed. Right? I'm using the notes of a C major scale. And just to begin to some a few minutes of improvisation, it's a little different than just practicing the scale of well, Now I'm starting to get to a place where I'm kind of making stuff up with it. What is making stuff up? Just phrases, just rhythm. So I just went bum bum ba da bum 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 How do I know I did that? Because I, I heard it, right? So I went bum bum ba da dum dum bum bum And I play that same rhythm in another place. begin to play with your scales in this way. I love to set a timer up. I always practice with a five minute timer. I put five minutes on the clock and just spend some time playing rhythms over a scale. They can be very simple too. And if you stay with just that, you'll be amazed at how many ideas will come out of that, let alone if you just change it a little bit. So, so improvisation is such a joyous thing and I find it, it just makes people's lives so much more relaxed because there is implied in the exercise of self-acceptance.